A very golden saying goes, you do not throw the child away alongside the dirty water with which you've used to bathe him. I guess that simply means that when it comes to dealing with human character, we should quickly settle for the option of learning what to accommodate and learning what to throw out and not completely discard people because they have a few issues that we need to adjust. The entertainment industry is filled with a lot of things, but one that seems to stand out as filling it to the brim is the fakeness of people, the inability to stay true and real to themselves, a complete change in the character that they used to have before they hit the limelight. The truth is, some people look at these ones and wonder if they were the same people they've always known. This is not just a global problem, it's also very peculiar in the Nigerian entertainment industry. We're being carried away, nose in the air, and chips on the shoulder is the first thing you observe about the first artist that gets a chance at the limelight. Now that's our concern today. We would be talking about losing your head for the sake of the fame and the pressures to change your personality. Can it be successfully fought? Yes, it's on a show like this that you find out. My name is Emmanuel Ugoli and this is The Gist. Discussing this with us on The Gist today would be a man who's been a DJ for almost 30 years and he has won the crown. Yes, he is the one referred to as Cool DJ Jimmy Jat, known not just for his skill but for the power of his personality as being calm, down to earth and very, very humble. We see Jimmy's long stay in the business and find out precisely what lessons we can learn from him. And next to Jimmy, we have Ayo Makun, nah, we we'll call him AY. He's a stand up comic, he's also an entrepreneur, he's a showbiz promoter. AY sits in the Guinness Book of World Records for the most returns for a movie in the western part of Africa. He's also looking very strongly to beat his own record with his new movie called A Trip to Jamaica. Known for his level-headedness, his accessibility, and his calm dominion, we also look at how he's been able to keep his character together despite the pressure of the entertainment industry. Yeah, gotcha. Welcome to the show. Good to have you here. Um, it was Julius Caesar who would walk down the streets of Rome and people would throw their clothes at him, the garments and their olive branches, and he would step on practically everything that there was. The crowd was a mammoth at one yelling his name, but he would insist on someone who was like a close friend of his who walked behind him and have that one in routine turn over, you know, bend over and whisper in his ears. And the words he would say to Julius Caesar is, Caesar, you are bought a man. You are but a man. And Julius Caesar needed to be hearing that constantly so he could keep his feet on the ground and not lose his head and begin to feel like he was one of the gods. Yeah, so I, I look at the industry of entertainment today and I find very missing most of the time this one voice in the head of the people who get easily carried away by what's, what's happening on the inside. And then we said, okay, so what magic have those who have refused to get carried away? whose character, the way it came in, has probably even at best improved in its steadiness and not been completely blown into being totally different people. And we are so more than proud to have both of you here stand as icons when it comes to this, right? And on that note, I'd just really like to ask, is there a secret? What is, what is responsible? Why, why are you still the way you are? How many years now, Jimmy? Almost uh, 30. Almost 30. More than 30 at the end of the day. I mean, okay. Yeah. Now, Jimmy, you are referred to as the number one DJ in the continent. I had a couple of DJs, spin all and all there, and I reminded them very clearly. I said, you know, everybody's playing out Jimmy's script. You know, I said to them, like, you're not just a trailblazer. You're, you're clearly number one in what you do. And then it's not been a question of you were number one for five years and came back in 1995. It's a question of Jimmy has been number one for a straight 30 years. 
And doesn't that make you wake up in the morning and say something like, at my level, I'm not supposed to. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> at, at my level, I'm not supposed to. Wow. Um, it's a tough, I mean, it's not even a question. I mean, so uh, it's not like it requires an answer, but an, maybe an explanation. Okay. Um, first of all, I always tell people, there are no special human beings. Mm. No special people. If people appreciate you and people celebrate you, mm -hmm. and then make you feel like they appreciate you that much that they make you feel special, then mm. you should appreciate that. And mm -hmm. if you appreciate that, you would not place yourself above people. You will not get to that point where you so think, smell the privileged nature about the attention. Exactly. I mean, use um, technology as an example. Mm. It's easy to say, okay, two cars, maybe a Ferrari and one other car, and then you can open them and realize that, oh, see the engine, this is more powerful than that. Or oh, see uh, the exhaust, double exhaust, this one has, you know, things like that. With humans, if you open any two human beings, you're going to find the same thing. In <laughs> okay. You'll find one brain, one earth. You, you will not find humans that will say, ah, man, doctors open and uh, we'll 20 we'll ribs. We'll <laughs> <we'll come. laughs> and if it's allowed, oh, instead of, I mean, like, you say double exhaust, <laughs> not, you know, you're not going to find any. So that means if you take the biggest celebrity from anywhere and you take the the lowest of anybody from somewhere mm -hmm. if you split them open it's gonna we're all the same okay you understand so if you realize that you're not going to get to that point where you feel you're a special being mm -hmm. it is the celebration and the appreciation of people mm. that places you there and you must understand and respect that and give that back do you understand what i'm saying and okay. that constantly will always keep you on a level where you feel like you know I'm, more, I'm, I'm appreciative of where people place me. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm, you know, I must have been a special being. I mean, I must have four legs or five arms. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. to, to have been, um, you know, so if you realize that, you know, you will always, you'll always remain, you know. Is this the principle that works with you? Well, uh, it just talked about being a special being. Yes, I would say, yes, you're special. Mm. But before, before, the, before we go into what Jimmy yeah. said, and yeah. I, I clearly explained why Jimmy had become Jimmy mm -hmm. and how why it's shocking to some of us that, I mean, his shoulders are pretty much without chips and his head is pretty much level. Uh, if we looked at your case as well, mm -hmm. it is a clear case of there are some things you're doing and it seems like, man, this has to have a spiritual spin to it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know. Yeah, he just accuse you of being jazz man. <laughs> jazz man. <laughs> jazz man. So, so, so you come. Jazz man and nothing. <laughs> so so you, you, you touch your events and they explode. You touch the movies, he explodes. You, you have a TV show, it's super successful. So it's like that minus touch thing, really, as if you literally live it. And... It does, it, you probably are one of the very few, like Jimmy is, who are, because we have stars now who are regional stars, but then a few of you are, are pretty much pan Nigeria, pan West Africa, into other parts of the world. In your case, you're even breaking outside Nigeria and Africa. And I'm asking myself too, for your age and how much you have done, professional success, which of course I heard today from the movie guys that led to a lot of material success. Why haven't you lost it too? Uh, well, uh, it depends on, uh, uh, it has to do with you knowing yourself. Okay. You, you need to know where you're coming from. Uh, for me, where I'm coming from counts a lot. And uh, you get to a, a certain position where you are bound to even lose it. But uh, like you said, you need somebody who's just going to be there doing all the nudging and proving, reminding you you know and uh, telling you that this is how to do it or this is not how to do it you have that kind of support system oh yes i do i do and i have that kind of person in my wife there are times um yes the head is very is, is something i keep on the low mm -hmm. two four seven mm -hmm. but as human there are times you just lose it for a second not because um it's something you want to do mm. but because of the kind of pressure mm. that you for example, there are a lot of people who don't even know what you're going through. Mm -hmm. And they just believe that because you are in a certain position, mm -hmm. they must get the kind of attention that they need mm -hmm. without uh, thinking of what you're trying to do at that point in time. Yeah. And then 
when you finally realize that you you're going the wrong way for example uh, i i always tell people uh let's take pictures for example you you're trying to catch a flight <laughs> you are the airport and you know that you need to get on that flight mm -hmm. and you just have people coming around say, ah, hey guy let's do pictures and what have you and then you're trying to explain it and the man on the other side doesn't even care mm -hmm. all he needs this is, is picture. that picture mm -hmm. and then you are thinking of the refund that you are going to make because you know that that route maybe just one or two flights so if you miss it and then you're there and they will just say something pretty nasty to you some of them do that mm -hmm. and then when they do something like that um and you turn around and say, God, why you talk like that now? Mm -hmm. And the time that you probably would have spent taking that picture, you are spending that time Not trying to explain who you are. And, uh, and then I've come to realize that you don't even need to explain to anybody who you are. Who you are is who you are. Mm. And uh, for me, the support system, like I was trying to say, is my wife. Okay. Because there are times I'll, I'll grab, I'll pick up a phone because I give my direct numbers a lot. Mm -hmm. And my office people they've warned me about it no give this number i said no i like to have that direct feel but then there are people who also abuse it abuse it in the sense that sometimes i'll just respond guy why would you say it and like and my wife will remind you you know this is part of the business mm. so you just have to be nice at times you just have to call back mm -hmm. and just uh, and control that for me i just have to i i always want to be me I always want to do what I understand, mm. and that is it. Okay, but uh, Jimmy, what you, from where you're sitting, yeah. you've seen a whole lot. Uh, you've seen the, the manager who barely is known by anybody introduce himself and say, my name is John, and my artist be this, and the artist is twice as humble as the manager, nodding his head at the back. And four months later, the manager is just some guy picking phone calls. And the guy's chest, the artist is now all over the place. Yeah. Like when, the, there's, there's a saying I saw somewhere that goes, there's nothing as painful as watching people you cared for turn into people you don't want to have anything to do yeah. with. Have you, has that happened to you oh, in the seven. industry? Yeah. Um, I mean, to buttress what he was saying. And it's, ha it's happened to you. Oh, several. Okay. Several. Um, <laughs> you know, I think most times, I mm. mean, it boils down to, to upbringing. It's your upbringing of the other people. Yeah, I mean, okay. it's upbringing at the end of the day because if you have very good upbringing, mm -hmm. there are certain things about you that will be difficult because you will have been used to that. It will be difficult to change mm -hmm. no matter what comes your way. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? I've had artists come up to me, you know, at the time when they're trying to you know, come up, you mm -hmm. know, with that kind of uh, attitude. You know, and then oh, maybe the singles playing, the songs played twice on radio. <laughs> And then you see the same person and you know all over the place yeah and then you st you're still around when the same person feels there's no rotation anymore so <laughs> you know but um you know i i think it, it has to do with upbringing if you if you have the right upbringing and you have that constant voice that tells you something like you said about Julius Caesar, for instance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you have that constant voice, that voice can be imaginary. It doesn't have to be somebody, you know, talking to you. It's yes. constant. Like for me, when I started, it was always my mom and my parents generally, but my mom mainly. Like, what would my mom, how would she feel if she hears that I did this? And then it moved on to when I got married, oh, what my wife, my mom would think. And then you, you you start having kids. You are like, how proud would your kids be? So you've always had a sense, sense of responsibility to people that yeah, you definitely. owe. Definitely. That's why I said upbringing is key. Yeah. You know, because you feel, if you always feel like you're not in this world alone, that you're linked to some other people. And you owe it to these people to, you know, to a level. You know, so how, 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 would, how would your mom feel that you fought at the VIP part of, part of a club? Exactly. Because they wouldn't let you in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that alone is yeah, I mean, going to make you... VIP, <laughs> that's another topic anyway. Okay. You know, some of the people, I always tell people, if you know the meaning of VIP, then you don't have to fight to get anywhere. Mm -hmm. Because truly, if you're, I mean, VIP doesn't mean very important place. Mm -hmm. It means very important personality. Mm -hmm. So wherever you're standing, that's where the VIP very is. very important person, Wherever you're standing is VIP area. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to fight to get to one space. Which brings me to one part, one part of the situation. Yeah. People feel like they deserve certain things as celebrities. You yes. know, first class, front row. Mm. Do you ever walk into places and you're not bothered about, about the recognition? Uh, look, I, uh, 247, I usually don't uh, bother. 
about the recognition. Not at all. Can you really walk into a place and, you know, they don't, okay. they don't even come to give you a seat where you should sit? I just came from Bini okay. yesterday. And uh, not because I can't afford business class. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can afford it. But sometimes I... I just want to find myself amongst the guys so that I can I can relate, I can interact, I feel, can feel their pulse. Yeah, I can get some things off them that I can use. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not with the people, you can't get they're because the, the people the yeah. people on the other side, they don't have the content that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So when you're there, but trust me, there are people who are still going to look at you and be like, Okay, what's your business here? What do you come for here? And they'll make you look completely stupid for doing that oh you don't broke mm -hmm. and what have you now this sense of entitlement is very very common in the entertainment industry that's the word as sense, so, sense yes, of entitlement a sense of entitlement is very very common as soon as you have something that is doing well out there mm -hmm. automatically you uh, ay used to call you for a show and the ticket that is supposed to be yours is one you know economy ticket but because you have that come on how would you want people to feel when they see me sitting there but you, you know now and all that and then you end up buying the business class ticket and they even move it even towards the direction of their managers uh, of course you know my manager cannot sit behind and, that. and I think I was reminding somebody I said if you're more as big as he is in the business mm -hmm. I can remember how many years you know, because it's about the artist at that point in time, and mm -hmm. then he's going to take the back seat. But that's not the discussion we're having right now. Mm -hmm. But yes, a uh, sense of entitlement is killing the industry today. Because everybody believes that if I am in this position, what it means is that every benefit, it has to do with fees, mm. it has to do with uh, their welfare, mm -hmm. it has to do with everything. And they don't even stand for a second mm. to relate with other people. Let's take pictures. I always would like to use pictures. Mm. Uh, there's something that happened to me way back. I was working with my boss, Alibaba. Then I was his personal assistant. And I saw people, they were taking pictures with him. Mm. And I said to myself, Father Lord, if one day you just... You reach this level. gather people like this and they start taking pictures with me man i'll be the happiest yeah. man in the world and today people keep wondering how come you be in one position you're taking pictures until the last person leaves and i said that's the covenant i had with I'm god that. <laughs> it was you know, because really coming <laughs> up as a dj I know yeah. there mm -hmm. was one female act at that time mm -hmm. she was really big mm -hmm. you know and i tried taking a picture with her you know, and the PA at that time, who, tends to, who was um, at the time a very popular TV personality mm -hmm. at the time, <laughs> blocked me out. Mm -hmm. And I would never forget that. That was, it was in the 80s. <laughs> I would never forget. So every time I find myself in that situation and maybe, as, I mean, PAs or bodyguards are trying to, mm -hmm. you know, Stop people, people from, from coming to me. I stop them because <laughs> truly, you will never. For, I, I, I mean, thirty years later, over thirty years, I mm. still can't forget that kind that of that experience. experience. You know, so you don't, you don't now repeat that. So okay, guys, explain you know, to me. Explain yeah. to me now. So these are some of the things that guys. Explain, explain to me. Yeah. The, see the similarity. Yeah. She can't. Couldn't wait to have someone come take his picture. Mm -hmm. He remembers what it was like to observe from a distance yeah. that kind of glory given to yeah. Alibaba. Yeah. So he's ready to stay here forever as long as the last yeah. person gets his picture. You bouncers had embarrassed and so you would never let that happen to him yeah. so i try to understand how is it that some of these guys have been through some of these things you're talking about and the second thing knocks the door open there's a back door that's open and they forget everything that they've, they've been through there's a spirit do not forget that there's a spirit there's a spirit what, what, what spirit is that because do not forget that most of these guys are from very humble backgrounds yes the story of a David Doe is one out of a hundred oh, in, in the industry of music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So where, where, is, where do they forget? Fame. Fame has is, uh, its spirit. And then they're surrounded by lo loads of times. You're surrounded by psychophants. You know, you're, su you're surrounded by people that tells you, what that, you, you're want more, you that you're more than what you are. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you have people that will always pull you down and say, oh, Actually, you're here, mm. but they keep pulling you like you're mm -hmm. lesser than where you think you are. Mm -hmm. Like there's still a whole lot of, you know, steps and levels to attain and achieve. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You you won't get to that point. Mm -hmm. But most times, 
I mean, I've seen in is an entertainment or in showbiz. Okay, maybe because I revolve around there. Mm -hmm. When you're in school, you pray to pass exam and go to the next class, mm -hmm. and then from the next class, hopefully if you do very well, they move you two steps up. You know, so maybe from grade one to grade three at most, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they will move you from grade one to grade ten. Glory. In entertainment, mm -hmm. people pray to get into that entertainment space, mm -hmm. and then they get in and they're praying. To, to blow to to be to own I mean to have a PhD <laughs> the next minute you know do you understand what I'm saying and then but it does happen really yeah. it does happen you see somebody just come up and they get up there the, no time. Up there, yeah. but you know you need to understand that wherever you where whatever level you've got into mm -hmm. there's still you know there's still levels that are higher than that mm -hmm. you understand and constantly that should you know let you realize that look there's more to be done and I'm still not, and I'm not big. You can't even be bigger than your fans. There's a backside to you all know, of this. Exactly. There's a backside to all of this, which is what is affecting uh, a, a good percentage of the entertainers today. Mm. Now, the backside is, it's good for you to bask in that euphoria. It's good for you to be big. Mm -hmm. It's good for you to be famous. It's good for you to have that larger than life mm. attitude. But it doesn't last. This is the one part that yeah. these people don't understand. I'll take Two Face Edibia uh, and use him as an example. Mm -hmm. It's been there over time. Mm -hmm. And over time, Two Baba hasn't come up with all the eats back to back, back mm -hmm. to back. Mm -hmm. There's a low moment. You, you, you understand, in mm -hmm. every business, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> the economy is on the low side. But mm -hmm. in almost everything, there's, there are low moments. Mm -hmm. But then, people keep wondering up to date, everywhere he steps into. It comes into this all. Everybody is standing up. Everybody is saying, "True, Baba." If you like, say whatever you want to say about him. Is he's, he's had fifty kids, one hundred concubines. Say anything you want to say. The people are still very much connected with him. Brands are connected with him. It has to do with his person because he understands the business. Being humble mm. is. It's not something you just pick on the street. Mm. Mm. It's something that comes from the inside. It's not something you can fake. If you fake it, the other part of you will give you away. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at Jimmy Jatt in front of me. Mm -hmm. it, 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 uh, these are people, look at Alibaba. Mm -hmm. I, if, whenever people get to interview me, I mention these three names. Mm -hmm. I say, Tubaba, DJ Jimmy Jatt, Alibaba. Just study these guys. These are people, when we talk about understanding the business you understand it when you talk about how refined they are mm -hmm. they are there mm -hmm. and then you see them doing their thing you see some other people just come that's why they are selling business mm -hmm. and that's why you use the word number one for how many years mm -hmm. that's why you see we're going to call alibaba the king of comedy and that's why tubaba is where he is and when you see these guys when that one album or one track <laughs> the minute it fades <laughs> you see them then it's not difficult for them to just get to another level. People like Tubaba can be there. Brands can just realize that, okay, I think there are low moments, so, but you know this is an icon. Mm -hmm. This is a brand that has to be respected. This is a brand that cannot just go like that based on the legacy that he has brought into the industry. They are going to sustain him and make him just because of his person. Mm -hmm. So I think these younger ones should learn. There's some, there's some, you can't even have access to them. You can't even yeah. talk to what, them what, on the what, phone. What we appreciate about both of you is the accessibility. We had mentioned Two Face now, and also called Alibaba's name. And um, what we have is uh, briefly them talking to us and telling us quickly how they do what they do and how they're able to keep their heads together intact despite the fact that they have become very popular over time and very comfortable. Now, we're going to talk to them. But when we get back, we'll be looking at the pressures you fight to keep your head together. Okay? So for now, we'll talk to Alibaba, the king of comedy, and Tubaba, who's also the king of his music world, and find out from them precisely what it takes for them to be them, to keep their personalities intact despite the pressures of the entertainment world. We'll be right back. Oh, but that question, you know, say, I will just attribute it to my upbringing. You know, I grew up in a very humble um, home. You know, my parents taught me to respect everybody, no matter their level in society, no matter how they are, you know, how, you know, I should respect everybody. And I guess, you know, um, I've carried that all the way in my life, you know, because when that saying that they say that, you know, you never know who you meet, you never know, everybody has potential. 
everybody is capable of becoming, you know, becoming somebody, becoming massive, becoming huge. You understand what I'm saying? So, with a few money in my pocket and a few people saying, hey, what's up, what's up? It doesn't mean that, it doesn't mean that I don't go to the toilet no more. You know, you know me say, hunger, they catch me at my own, I own at the chop. Now the same normal food as they chop. The same normal water, the same, you know, you know, just, just like that saying goes. Everybody, all of us, they bleed the same bleed. They cut you, cut me, we bleed. You know, so for me, I look at everybody as, you know, a creation of the Almighty, and we are all created equal. You understand what I'm saying? So, except, like, except you say, I do anyhow around me, hey, I go respect myself free, you understand what I'm saying? So, I've lived with that principle, and I, and I think I'm going to live like that till I die. I think it's just out of the fact that I'm in the same industry and I know what it takes and what everybody goes through. So, I respect everybody's hustle. I was taught by my dad to to be hardworking. I was taught by my dad a uh, few value systems that uh, we don't see around uh, very much these days. Um, I learned to work hard from the age of 16. And so it is those things begin to add to the person you become and they fortify you when you begin to go through the storms of fame, the, the pools of uh, popularity, and then the the associated uh, uh, evils that come with being popular. The reason some people don't have much, they don't last long in this in in in, a, in an entertainment industry is they have a shortfall of religious backing, of value training, of um, of humble beginnings. So when they stumble into wealth, they lack a proper understanding to understand, uh, to, to manage it. So the guy did not know how to manage 2,000 Naira, steps into fame, he gets 3 million Naira, and the first thing he wants to do is buy the most expensive car. So you, you, you see that you have uh, a disconnect in the person's value of life, value of friendship, and understanding of uh, economic dynamic. As soon as you hit fame, it begins to be too late to determine who really loves you. In this business, your career can die depending on the kind of spouse you choose. If you choose a spouse that does not understand the intricate dynamics of show business, you won't last. Some people do not quite understand the the rewards of respect. Like I said, it's reciprocal. And so, when you show respect and pad it up with humility, it, it, it takes you a longer distance than fame would have taken you. Okay, so the first thing we looked at is what happens when there's a lot of admiration from people. It is only you normal and human to let it get to you a little. Mm. How do you stop that from getting to you? By remembering, remembering that everyone is the same and you cannot be bigger than your fans. Mm. And also by getting a voice a support system at home that helps you also constantly say that you should keep yourself in check. Uh, but if you leave that too, one of the things that happens to you is there are things that you attract. Uh, one of them very beautiful women let's be honest it doesn't, <laughs> it, doesn't, yeah. it doesn't matter whether you're married yeah it doesn't look you have fame you have some power mm -hmm. you have the money so women one thing that has ruined almost everybody who's in the business yeah actually baba if you remember our last talk what was one thing that you should look out for if you want to stay long and he said the influence of women that, that was one lesson he had learned over the business. So how do you how do you cope with women first? Um, I've been lucky, you know, to be honest with you. Um, when so they come? No, I mean, it's all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> male, female, loads of them. Okay. You know, and these days, don't even think it's only women that worries you. <laughs> you, 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 mean that, you know, but let me tell you some of the Are things. You yeah, let me tell you some of the things that helps me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm from a broken home. I'm oh. from a polygamous home. Tonto 
to quarrel Them say this got cash Them does it only moment Them say this and that Wipe this spread them to the core Them say this and that Too much can the sin be yeah. Oh hurry this, oh hurry that Everybody watching your back Hey, you want to eat I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you this Swiss, don't say the beat Some people keep money, hide them for Swiss All this in both